this uh, mm. uh, the incident uh, caused the failure of uh, my I had to replace some hardware upgraded actually um, also victorious uh, and then um, I hope it, it, it will upgrade my hardware you know, I always uh, wanted to use my high resolution camera it worked until last minute now we have to switch back so bear with me <laughs> Mm. Okay, let me see if we are. Okay, so speaker view where I am. Copy my video. Hello? Hello? Can you can you see my video? Uh now there's a little picture. A little picture only? Where is that? Oh, I see Henry Lee. Um okay. I see. I see everybody there. Okay. I got confused. There. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. This one is okay. Let's do this. Okay, perfect. So cool. uh, I have some uh, good news that uh, we can show you high resolution uh, originals. Uh, so it's always, you know, something bad turns uh, good. So let me record it before I forgot. Okay. You are bouncing in and out. Oh, really? Okay, now you're on. Okay. Let me... All right. Um, I hope it's news. Now you're off. Um, Okay, maybe, please mute everybody. <laughs> yeah, let me mute everybody. Okay, I think, yeah, because uh, somebody is uh, mute, uh, that's the problem. Thank you, Yodi, you solved it. Okay, so ping my video, so my um, video will not be on and off. Ping my video, okay, ping my video. If you use an iPad, double click on the um, small window in the gallery view, and you will fix that. But let me, I want to see everybody at this time first um, before I start to demo. Um, so this is our last, uh, not last class, second from last. Uh, we have spent, uh, I think three lessons on Southern Song Dynasty, which is uh, actually uh, the Song Dynasty, uh, Northern Song lasted about 100 years and then Southern Song lasted about 200 years. Um, believe it or not, it's a very long uh, dynasty, um, although they lost uh, half of the territories to the Normans in the north. And finally, it was conquered by the Mong Mongol dynasty called Yuan. Um, and the, the Chinese um, elite have uh, lost their positions in the government, uh, become a, a hermit escaped from uh, the uh, public service uh, life uh, and pursue art and literature um, in the nature. So they turned inward in, uh, in, uh, in the painting have uh, uh, style has also changed from uh, the academic uh, uh, realistic style painting what they see from painting what they uh, feel. Uh, express uh, them, themselves. So uh, I have quoted uh, uh, some, uh, is there still noise there? Mute yourself, will you log in? Okay, let me just mute everybody again. Um, so the main, uh, the Yuan dynasty uh, lasted another uh, less than a century, I think 30, uh, I'm sorry, 90 years. Um, so there are four masters uh, we have four masters for each dynasty, by the way, in the art history uh, of China. Uh, the Yuan dynasty, uh, the four are, mute. let me make sure you don't mute yourself when I talk, okay. Okay, we should be quiet now. Um, so the Yuan dynasty uh, have these four 
uh, the Huang Gong Wang, Wang Meng, uh, don't worry about the spelling. I sent you uh, the email in the handout. You can check it out. Um, Huang Gong Wang, Wang Meng, uh, Wu Zhen, and Ni Zhan. All four of them have lived somehow in their life um, uh, uh, as a uh, recruition or um, recruits. Um, do you know the word recruition? <laughs> I checked the dictionary. Sometimes my computer says it's wrong. There, there's no such word. Or it is, it's a very uh, rare punish, punishment in Philippines. Judy, do you know that? <laughs> they, they send the death sentence uh, prisoner you know, to a, a distant uh, mountain and keep them from outside the world for the rest of their life. That's called the uh, recruition. <laughs> anyway, recruiting used in uh, this context, the Chinese art history is uh, uh, life uh, of a cutout from outside world. By the way, uh, I sent you a question about uh, Walden Pond. Have you ever, let me turn on, you can unmute yourself because I, I want to, you can raise your hand maybe. How many of you have uh, read or heard um, Henry David Thoreau's Warden? Great, okay. A few of you at least. Okay, great. Okay, long story short, when I just came to the States in 1987, <clears throat> that's 20, 30 years ago, huh? 34 years, 32, 32 years ago, long time. Um, I was studying English. Uh, I, I, started, I started to teach at the University of Ex uh, Extension, you know, uh, Experimental College in University of Washington when I studied um, Chinese uh, medieval history. Um, but my English was not good enough. So I took uh, uh, as, you know, ESL, English as Second Language, uh, why I audited my professor's class uh, for two years. Then I finally got uh, my, um, scholarship and uh, um, to become a graduate student. So during this time, when I teach uh, art uh, paintings, my uh, student uh, uh, recommended this book for me to read as a good source for, to learn English. Also, you know, to help uh, understand, you know, the, the nature, uh, the, what is now, I, I just learned this term, transcendentalist, right? Um, but at that time, I don't have that mood. So I, 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 I read a few pages and uh, I, the book was not with me anymore, unfortunately. But until recently, my friend in New Jersey, he lives in the suburb, uh, maybe. Uh, he's uh, shared this book, a new version, of annotated version on, on, on Amazon. I didn't order that yet, but I will. So I went to YouTube, I started listening. When I prepared this class, um, I was listening to that, and it's really helpful me to quite down to rethink, to reflect on the um, uh, life, not just about men living in woods, but about how to live like a man, a woman. Okay, it's very. Uh, I, I would recommend to you to, uh, you know, to to listen to it while you practice this lesson later after the class, and my assignment to to. I just thought about that, will be to paint the um, Thoreau's uh, cabin in the woods in the uh, imagination, <laughs> in Ni Yuning style, Ni Zhan style. Okay, so now, now let's go to, um, yeah, it's a high school reading, huh? Okay, I think my daughter should have read that. Um, Okay, let's do um, some uh, uh, high resolution. Um, let me see if I can just share screen so I can show you. Okay, here's a painting um, in the is in a website. It's a uh, online treasury, uh, like a anyway. It has a, the, 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 a collection of high resolution uh, pictures from all, uh, over the world uh, in Taiwan, uh, in a metropolitan museum, New York. Uh, and I cannot 
really download it. That's why uh, I can show you this picture that I, I'm, I'm going to copy by Li Zhan. Li Zhan is a very legendary figure. Um, let me show you a picture of him. Okay, let me just do this. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, I have to close this. Um, okay, let me just share the screen because uh, I'm not painting. I'm sorry about this. Uh, okay. Can you see this picture here? Uh, can you see if I can enlarge it? Okay, uh, he is a, a noble man. In his, uh, he lived uh, two lives in the early years, like before the uh, 40s, maybe. He, he, is a, um, his, he was born to a rich family, a uh, literary family. Um, he had uh, education in classics, in um, Taoism. His brother was Taoist priest, and uh, I believe Zen Buddh Buddhism, something like that. Um, so he became a calligrapher. Uh, he's known. Um, by contemporaries of his uh, neat, neat freak. He's, in, he's very um, obsessed with the neat. And so in, in, by his side, you can see one boy holding a bloom kind of duster and a girl holding a, 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 a water container with a uh, a basin kind of ancient uh, style to, to uh, and um, a towel. Um, he's holding his brush and uh, paper. And uh, his paintings behind. Um, in the, he was born in the year of uh, 1301, I think. After um, 1350, around that time, uh, about his uh, 50s, uh, he became a hermit because there was a political turmoil. Started with natural disasters and flood. And the UN government started to heavily uh, levy the tax on rich uh, people. And he just dispersed all his wealth and uh, bought it a, uh, a houseboat um, with uh, all his uh, four treasures. The, 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 uh, painting utensils and uh, his scrolls and paper and start wandering in on Lake Lake Tai, tai, tai Hu, <coughs> Lake Lake Tai. That's a, um, a big river area and with a network of uh, rivers and uh, lakes in the Zhejiang and the uh, uh, Jiangsu, Southern Yangtze area. Okay, <coughs> so um, he, he will stay with uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, friends and the family, and uh, uh, in one occasion with a gathering, including uh, Huang Gongwang, uh, he is one of the four um, UN masters. Uh, he admired. Uh, he he did this painting to to try to to um, somehow in his uh, with his uh, influence maybe style to please and got approval from Huang Gongwang. And there were, uh, I think, uh, inscrip inscriptions. Uh, I think not this painting, the other one. Uh, it's got six, six gentlemen. There's a meeting of six gentlemen. Uh, let me see. Did I get that? Anyway, um, so he he also paint, um, you know, this re repeatedly this kind of scene with the river banks on the front and the back. And the trees in between with the, the pavilion, uh, somehow, but no, no people there. And if you read his uh, poet, I quote, uh, he said his painting does not uh, try to be realistic, but to, to express himself. Okay. Um, 
and uh, he pays his stay with this kind of painting and got a lot of people so uh, sought after he 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 his painting is uh, very worthwhile just for a small piece of painting he you know he will pay his rent for a couple of weeks or months and um, um, and speaking of his neat freak, there are many legendary <laughs> stories. Um, he was forced to paint, uh, I mean, he was uh, first commissioned to paint um, for a rebellion leader's brother, but uh, uh, he refused. And then the next day he uh, met them in the, in the, by the lake somewhere, and they beat him almost to death. But he kept quiet, uh, silent without speaking any word or, or, or crying or begging, you know. Uh, after that, someone uh, re rescued him and uh, he was asked why he, he, he did not say a word. He said, open mouth is vulgar. So he is very, um, uh, what we call Gao Shi, uh, lofty trick scholar kind of. Um, so his paintings uh, reflecting his uh, purified, um, um, you know, uh, pursuit of uh, uh, neatness in, in both physical life and spiritual life. So you have to uh, be not, you know, lured by money or public opinion or force, violence. Even. So he just, you cannot feel the, the circumstance, circumstance he was traveling, living through. Uh, from these paintings, right? So um, that's why it's so difficult to copy. And um, many people have, have spent, like uh, the uh, well-known collector, C.C. Wong in New York. Uh, he lived in New York uh, and uh, he's a big fan of him and he was influenced by him heavily. But he said he, for many decades, he tried to copy, but never, never, never could. Um, if you look at this painting, just amazing. Uh, he, you know, following the influence of uh, Zhang Mengfu, he actually served in the Yuan court as the Song Dynasty, uh, uh, 11th century uh, grandson of uh, the founder of the Song Dynasty for legitimation purpose. He was summoned to the court and become like, a, the Chinese call him as collaborator. Uh, you know, he was, uh, but he he's preserved the uh, Chinese culture uh, and uh, uh, actually sponsored as many uh, painters like him. Uh, anyway, but uh, his influence uh, of uh, uh, calligraphy in painting is very uh, visible here uh, in, in the uh, in the evening's painting. Like uh, you know, the the, the trees tr trunks is very calligraphic. Uh, they don't. He doesn't uh, mind what is you know what uh, exactly look like the the, the rock. His uh, his uh, uh, he has a unique style of the uh, rock. It's called the bending belt style. You can see the squareized corner. Uh, he he would hold the, his his brush um, at the slant position and pull to the right and then um, uh, down folding down uh, at the end to form a corner kind of, this is called the zhe dai, the broken uh, folding belt. So this is a typical example of that. But you know, um, it's more important, I think, not the technique, it's his, uh, uh, his mood. And, uh, and just this horizontal lines, he paint the water, is <laughs> difficult to do. He start from the, light, medium maybe, uh, and then add uh, dry brush, lots of dry brush, and the dark dots, very tiny. Um, we call it uh, treating ink uh, like a gold, you know, just at the right spot, uh, no more, no less, you know, just very economical use of ink. So, um, he, he says himself in a, a book on, uh, uh, on 
what they call a penny manual, a, a, a teaching sample. He said the ink, uh, you could be free, but the brushwork is the, the main um, thing. You know, you can not uh, do it carelessly. You have to, that, that's the sixth um, gentleman meeting uh, painting. He did in the lamp light in, in the night and was uh, approved by his, uh, many people in the meeting, including Huang Gongwang. His uh, admired uh, contemporary, he's older than him. Hong Kong, okay. I think if you followed the lecture with uh, James Cahill, you would learn more about this period and how the recluse um, life uh, influenced their art. Uh, the but the Western scholars tend to see more, you know, the significance of the uh, story, the narratives of in art, but we as Chinese painters appreciate the brushwork and ink the most of this period. And they had strong influence on contemporary and uh, you know, on, on the uh, following centuries. Uh, so if you, if you uh, go through the mustard seed garden manual of painting, you will see many, many, many references to these four men, these four masters. Okay. So today we're going to learn um, his, his uh, painting, mostly monochrome uh, ink, but only one exception. This is the one I'm going to, to copy. Um, it's called uh, The Water and the Bamboo Dwelling. And uh, the reason I choose that is because um, it looked like a, the actual, uh, more than pound. Let me show you. I collected some uh, um, pictures. Okay, let me. Um, let's see. I don't know. I try to, to change the scene a bit more. Uh, okay, let me see if it's something different. Web browser. Oh, I didn't get it. Let me share screen. For, uh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't get it out. Um, but I, I think it's very important to show you the inspiration, not just the paint, the techniques. That's why I am uh, trying to show you this. Okay, um, yeah, see, this is, a, does it look like a New Yearnings uh, painting? In the winter time, in late, uh, late, late, uh, late autumn, maybe. There's some Western paintings I, I will show you later uh, for comparison. You know, this is the actual uh, cabin. It's a, it's a painting. Uh, this is the, the picture of it. Uh, this is the um, cabin that uh, uh, Henry Thoreau wrote his uh, thoughts uh, from the Walden Pond. Um, his quote. Uh, the, see this this uh, trees. Does it look like New Yearning? Okay, we can almost copy this. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes, this. Look at this island and the trees. The three trees. So my assignment for you is to create your version of the Walden Pond painting in Chinese brush painting style. No, you, you cannot find the quietness as uh, in the uh, 19th, uh, 18th century uh, when he wrote this. Uh, okay. So you, 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 your assignment is that why you do this painting and you think about that, I, I will try, you know, 
um, um, let's just start. You know, uh, we we already learned most of the technique. It's not the technique. Uh, I I tried to show you how to do the trees, but I will I will do it later when we have time. Uh, Otherwise, I'm out of time, I think. So I'm going to do this painting directly, try to copy it on the scroll. I, I cleaned my table just to, to honor Nimi to pay tribute to him. I'm definitely not a need to connect, uh, need to <laughs> freak, but I will try to be as clean as possible today. All right, I, I made a copy and then I traced it with a carbon paper like this. You can get it uh, from uh, Blue Heron Arts. It's not uh, very messy. It, it's uh, it's like a pencil drawing. Uh, you can erase erase it, but I tried. Uh, but it will make the paper look uh, uh, fuzzy. <laughs> so uh, because I sh I didn't fix it, so somehow the the composition moved. But it doesn't matter as long as I got these trees, especially the roots and the the, uh, the planes, right? Okay. Don't try. You know, I I bet you know everybody's uh, version will be different. Everybody's version will be different. Okay. And uh, I should grind my ink. See it uh, right on the edge. I think that's the. Closest I can get. I can turn on the lights. Would that be better? Okay. So I will grind the ink because I'm using the size. The uh, this is semi sized. You can use the size or semi sized. Semi sized uh, size the paper. I used it last time. Um, maybe I use some for decoration, uh, for, for illustration purpose. Where's my, I think it's off. I don't need much ink for this painting, I think. But I was, uh, we still need to get maybe uh, 10 gram or something, <laughs> I don't know, five gram. No, 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 just the one gram, that's enough. My, maybe 10 drops of water. Okay, um, I will use uh, this. Oh, I do like the, uh, the peach sap because it will give me some more. This contemporary Huang Gongwan wrote uh, in a secret uh, of a landscape uh, essay. Uh, he 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 used some of, uh, yellow in the in the in the ink uh, to I don't know to tone it, but uh, nobody has studied that to prove. Uh, more commonly, they use uh, indigo. Right? I got some yellow left over, so let's see what happens. So we start from the, the medium grade, all right? So I just draw this, uh, uh, you can enlarge this painting. Um, this is how we do it. Oops. Oh, I think I got all the windows open here. The new computer is seeing, I try to find that window. But this uh, version is very uh, bright. It may be more true with a different version, I think. 
um, I sent you both. I don't want to, to mislead you with this uh, color because it's too colorful for me. I think this one may be more uh, close, closer to the original. So I, I'll start with the main tree's uh, trunk. Remember how we do the trees? We, we start from the, the left side. Uh, he's very sensitive with uh, his, the brush tip. You know, he, he you know, don't have to hold the brush straight, but just keep it in the center of the stroke. Uh, you can do, you can use the relatively wet light ink to start with, so you don't have to frequently load. In the end, he will use a dry brush with dark ink to um, reinstate some of the you know, lost lines and the, uh, the, the shady part, maybe some kind of. So you can, you can have some uh, um, incompleteness, you know, like uh, not flying white, lost and found. At this point, I, I, in that second line, I worried about the thickness. So his tree is very thin, slim, very uh, noble. <laughs> so definitely not too vulgar, you know, not too fat, not too um, that kind of. At this point, um, you can you can start to maybe you know he 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 did the, the um, bark. This is a um, tree with a diagonal lines. This is the the knob hole, knob hole, and this is a knob. A little swearing there indicates uh, a. a a junction or something. Bring it a little bit down. You cannot see the tree well. Okay. So, um, the another important um, characteristic of his painting is that. Uh, it's like a string cote, you know, there are different uh, um, lines uh, combined to work together. So you, when you draw, you just do it. Uh, and then the next one may, may correct that without erasing the first one, just, you know, like a drawing um, sketching concept. But uh, the ink is so light and it's close to each other. So you, you, you don't have to, um, vary the ink at this point. It's very important, don't load the brush with the dark ink at all. Very, very important. Dark ink is applied later after this dries. No breaking ink here, otherwise it would be contaminated, considered to um, unclean. I will draw all four of them just to, to lay out my composition. And then I can actually, each stroke is a composition. So if there's a distinction between the man or the host and the guest, right? Because the detail is, are different. Like the second one, there's no root. The first one has a, a hint of root, but you can see the other two also Every little uh, small group could have the host and guest are, are supporting in the main. Um, so you, you can, um, don't take it too literal. So it, it could be host and guest in, in uh, one small group and also the, the host. In, Okay, so I just make a little, 
he probably do one tree uh, first and then do the, uh, the for start from the front and then the second one and then the the one behind that's um, what I guess will work so I will use the same kind of ink I, you know just uh, start to do some uh, uh, group of four jie, jie, jie stroke we learned last time stroke of four but don't do the dark yet no dark okay start with light uh, just kind of block in block in don't have to do the contour but the more, more of the you know the insights maybe you can you can overlap them but you don't have to because later we overlap with the different tonality you know of uh, that so i will just do side by side remember how we do this last time if you missed it uh, watch the rec the recording later four actually the first stroke first and second goes like this uh, it's a upside down we we um, right You know, it's just to think about the uh, nothing, just to concentrate on what do you do? Forgetting the politics. He's, he survived because he's far from politics. Another Contemporary, the youngest artist, Wang Meng, was imprisoned because his involvement was uh, anti and uh, anti Ming <laughs> rebellion. Ni Zhan lived through uh, the early uh, Ming dynasty, but he refused to collaborate. He, uh, either you know with the Chinese dynasty, he um, signed his picture in the Yuan Dynasty era name throughout his life. It's a very uh, in interesting. So he he just like to, to be himself, right? So I just block in the shape I outlined um, the, based on the handout. I, I just draw a contour. Now I just fill in that contour with a, Okay, but be careful not um, not confused to do two trees. Um, so there are some branches belongs to this tree behind. So I'm going to yeah, I already confused a little bit. So let me let me draw this. This is a different uh, style of uh, branches we haven't learned. Uh, this. You can check the handout I sent you uh, from the mustard seed garden manual. Uh, that that kind of uh, curved line is similar to the uh, crab crab uh, branches, but it's denser. It's it's not called the crab. The crab is like a one, two, three, four, or curved downward, right? Um, Something like that, uh, you can make a crossing also, and uh, you know just like that. But this this is different. This is just the for uh, some kind of uh, foliage. I don't I don't know what kind of tree, but uh, something like uh, not willow. You know this kind of uh, what is called. Uh, uh, we we have this kind of tree, I think. You can really not you what you can you you click you clicks right you clicks something like that so this is a this is something like 
like this, just downward. Oh, I think this is uh, one, uh, it's like a big jungle tree, uh, Sansu, I forgot there was a name of that, Sansu, it's a, not Cypress. I think, yeah, that is the oldest tree on earth, one of this kind of, I think that's, that's the kind of tree we're going to do. So I, I stay with this tone, no, no dark yet. Let me just get a bunch of them so I don't have to. I, I just washed my dishes. I got some yellow left over. You don't have to add yellow. But uh, it was recorded in the secret of the landscape painting by Huang Gong Wang in the Yuan Dynasty. Why don't I try it, try it since I got, got it on the palette. So let me draw this group. I, I'm concerned more with the outer shape of it. So I'll do it in, in uh, four strokes. So always find your minimum um, cluster. Always add four and you know, four and four, and then you can overlap them later with dark. Don't overlap it yet. So just kind of blocking with this. Uh, you can practice, uh, if you don't, are not copying the whole thing, you can practice the trees only. Just uh, um, follow me. It looks like uh, it, it could be branches and uh, le leaves all in one step. It's a very highly stylized kind of um, painting. And these formulas, sty style, um, types are found in the book of uh, um, painting, the, the manual, the painting manual of uh, the master painting manual and uh, was uh, treated like uh, vocabularies of, uh, of landscape painting later. So we don't worry about um, what kind of tree it is, but more of who's after whom, you know, we, we, we got this. So this would be Huang Gong Wang or Ni Yuning, typical, typically the Yuan Dynasty style, this horizontal. There are many different horizontal ones. The one in, uh, behind is uh, the vertical lines. I'm going to do that one shortly. And uh, let me see, oh yeah, there's one downward Downward, um, we learned last time, right? Uh, or before, we had this uh, in one of the Xia Gui, but actually it could be Ming Dynasty or Yuan Dynasty uh, copy of Xia Gui, the uh, returning uh, of the boat in the sun in the evening, that kind of, it's village, I think this, uh, this is downward to, Foliage is there. Okay, I try to identify the, the knob, the joint, the knob holes. And uh, this one has root. Actually, both of them. I just do all the tree root this time. And uh, you can make a distinction, you know, between the two. But this one considered it belongs to maybe first group behind uh, this. Uh, actually, it's very uh, ambiguous here. I I just added them uh, based on the logic, the li, the principle, because it have it has to connect the the qi. You know, you have to grow that way, even though I. 
cannot really see the uh, the strokes of the master, but I just want to. And uh, I, is it a good time to show you details? Because uh, um, before it's too late, maybe you should see this. Okay, just review what uh, we just saw. After you paint if, um, a, a few strokes, you would you would you would, uh, you would know what to see. That's my experience. See, this is what. Uh, we need to know. Okay, the, this I just did this tree. Uh, you can see it, everybody has their signature style. He he has a lot of amb ambiguities, but you can see the light ones. Forget about the dark. We tend to be influenced by dark immediately. But uh, look at the the underpainting. What he did, the underpainting without the dark dry strokes, the wet light ink one. This is the tree I'm working on. And uh, I will simplify that tree, the foliage with the uh, red. You can you can actually draw the triangles. This is I, I will leave it open for you. Um, the horizontal dots. Uh, it looks like a, there's another tree behind this pine. Anyway, let's get to. But you have to decide if you want to. Um, copy exactly or you want to modify it doesn't matter it just keep your I keep your mind open and uh, uh, adjust to the situation when it, when it, uh, you know, just don't copy stroke by stroke okay all right so I'm going to do the, the vertical lines vertical uh, foliage. Just the light, light ink ones. So I will do the main. See here. So I, my stroke's quite dry because it's in the back. I want to make it loose and uh, um, kind of uh, soft. Soft is the idea and. Uh, so I, I kind of start, uh, this is what we call the nail head stroke. We start heavy and then pull it down, lift, lifting the brush. But I kind of start from the, the brand, where the imaginary, maybe he had the hint of, a, you know, like I did with a light, light ink, it, it will be uh, overshadowed uh, with this, this same kind of ink we use. So it become very subtle. Um, this this exercise just to, to prove you know what's good brush stroke. Um, by good stroke we good brush stroke and ink use we use the term han xu. It's a very difficult to to translate. Um, I translate it as uh, implicit, implicit, uh, like. Uh, for example, if you have 100% ability or power or virtue, you only show 70%, maybe 50% or 40% like in Nizai. So he has one, but you still can see his 100%, his possession of the power of virtue. He, does, he doesn't, uh, um, if you show 100% or 120%, it's considered vulgar, uh, vulgar, vulgar. Yeah, painting that too, too showy, too showy, too much. Like a Shenzhou, Shenzhou is a Ming master among the four grand um, Ming master, Ming dynasty. Next, next dynasty will study. He's a very good uh, painter. He he admires Niu Ning, and uh, he tried to copy in front of his uh, teacher. Uh, he te his teacher keep yelling at him, too much, too much, over, over, too, too over. That's the, the <laughs> most common comment when you copy Nini. Too over, <laughs> too much. 
too much. It's really hard. He he has the you know the kind of a, uh, you can feel his passion and his uh, um, emotion, but uh, he doesn't show in his strokes. He, or he shows with a reserved. Um, strokes, you know. It's like dancing. If you um, if you dance like ballet, ballet, you have to keep the stroke uh, not falling. You know, to keep the the uh, brush in the brush tip in the center of the stroke. Okay. Um, I tend to leave too much, but you know, when I repeat, it will start to, to bleed, so I, I, I would leave it for now. So the next tree, uh, I try to change a little bit because uh, it's, it's, this is maybe his early work, the only surviving piece with color. So the, the stroke is pretty continuous, not, not uh, remember if you record the Southern song style, they would do the, the uh, tree trunk with a very heavy handed, um, heavy handed uh, contour, right? If you do that, you go back to the Southern song uh, professionals, not the literati's painting we're, we're doing. So, I will change this to a typical uh, late, maybe, let me see if I can find an example here. You don't have to do the this uh, alternative. Let me see if I can find a typical one. Yeah, something like that, like maybe horizontal, okay. Um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's uh, horizontal. It's almost like a pine tree, kind of. But pine tree won't be in red. If if I do the pine, I'll have to use the uh, green or or something. A blue indigo. Um, if you want to use uh, the keep the red foliage as in the original, you have to use uh, uh, triangles, maybe or or uh, other shape of uh, outline. Um, I I don't encourage you to do the same as uh, the mass the, the original copy. He he used a very um, untypical <laughs> kneeling style. It's a it's like um, wet into wet, uh, but you know he has no no um, bond of uh, any style because he is the master. He knows what he's doing. Um, as he as he wrote in a poem, he says, uh, "In my inner house." Um, I must become the host I keep, you know, keep, um, to keep keep. Uh, so you you have to be you are the artist. You decide what you really you know want. You are your own um, emperor, so to speak. In your inner home, you have to show. You can show yourself without painting a figure. He doesn't, he never paint a figure, but his, his uh, uh, existence, you know, his spirit 
is in every stroke you can feel it. It's, uh, It could be overlapping. So you don't have to leave space between uh, two, two trees or four, three trees. But make sure you distinguish uh, with the different tones later, especially when you add darks. Okay, let's go back to the last tree we'll get into. I will decide which kind of uh, tree is that. Let me see. So the original has a, a pine tree there. Uh, there's some un unknown tree behind. Um, I think I will do, let me just do the pine. It's fine, I think. Let me show you what, uh, what we have on the high resolution one. Okay, this, oh, so clear, right? Yeah, this is the pine tree, right? I just did this uh, ambiguous one. So maybe I should do something. Um, let's just do this dots maybe, because this dots looks like uh, there's something behind. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I will just do this little dots without the pine because we already have the horizontal pine next to it. I, I am not doing it. I just uh, shared the original uh, uh, on the um, original painting. So because we don't really see the details here. That's why I showed you a high resolution one. Let me just uh, go back to the even I enlarge it, you, you you can just see pixels. So you have to just uh, keep it, you know, just paint the contour first, in, and then you can add whatever you feel comfortable. Okay. And this tree does not have the root hole, the the hollow um, part in the root. Okay. And uh, it's very important to have a branch that, that turns, turns uh, back into the painting because it, it leads to the left. As an eye stopper, we, we need to create some uh, shi or movement. Uh, backward, okay, and uh, I just do it uh, with uh, the stack horn style, okay. Um, and you can sometimes combine the uh, stack horn and uh, some kind of uh, maybe upward uh, what we call the, the claw, the crab claw. Yeah, the crab claw it could be there. Just a, a eye stopper there. Okay, I'm, I'm going to dot it with a, just kind of a, um, oh, you remember Wu, Wu Zhen, Wu Zhen, 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 Wu Zhen. He, um, he, he created uh, this kind of five dot uh, we call it Mei uh, Hua Dian. He, his, uh, his pen name is uh, the uh, Taoist uh, um, follower or priest of uh, uh, Taoist follower of uh, Mei Hua Plum. Plum um, Master, Prime Master, Mei Hua Dao Ren. Uh, he's known for his, uh, his uh, dots. I'm using this new brush called the Blue Heron Arts uh, Mustard brush. You can get it uh, from uh, 
website. It's good for this kind of, uh, uh, we call the size is like a paper. Actually, I'm doing this a little smaller than a paper, but the shape, maybe the shape is paper dots, pe black paper dots. And you can you can dot the uh, light first. This is not, um, it's, it's of course uh, darker than the, in the uh, trunk. So you can add the dark later. I try not to overlapping, maybe that's a good idea. But uh, I already did on top, that's okay. You can do either way, I think. But just some dance and sparse. All right, that's uh, my trees. And uh, I'm going to do the um, the fun part. So I hold the brush and the slant position like a knee. Uh, let's, let's look at his stroke again um, before we do get some inspiration. Yeah, eucalyptus is the kind of tree of uh, this uh, uh, curve, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, share screen, okay. <coughs> oh, I keep zooming in, that's too detailed, I don't need much, okay. So look at this uh, contour. It's not very strong. Unlike the Song Dynasty paintings, uh, the contour was uh, enhanced later with dark dots and, uh, and some, uh, some uh, reinstatement maybe uh, in the dark, the deep uh, sunken part. Um, so, and the dark against light, that kind of squeeze squeeze out, you know, the, the back layer squeeze out the, the top of the first layer, that kind of thing. The, the, uh, the, the line is very obscure and blurred, not blurred, he used dry brush. Okay, dry brush, lots of dry brush, remember that. And the light, light ink, that's a new clean style. Okay, so I hold the brush, we don't use the side of the brush, um, it, this painting basically is um, the hand, it, because the rock is an uh, earthen uh, mount, you know, not, not the uh, square kind of uh, angular, angular. Uh, let me see, I cannot really make it. Oops. So I'm going to do this. So I'll start from this. Uh, um, and the main with the main tree. And this parallel lines uh, uh, with this, the same kind of uh, center, like a uh, curve, curved, but uh, rounded, you know, parallel. I, I push the brush. Actually, he, he likes to drag and maybe more. And that's, but this one not really very typical of his. So I, I draw the contour first, just to define. Remember the four steps we talked about in painting rocks? Okay, the contour comes first, you divide the contour. And then you add shaping strokes for texture. And then the dry scumbering or rubbing, if you will, um, for texture and the shaping or shading, not in the Western sense. Um, and then the color and dots.
line quality. Each line counts. You don't have to, you know, you can add uh, second line overlapping, but not exactly repeating it later. That's uh, like a orchestra, you know, different uh, instruments play together, different lines complement each other. And uh, here we have rock. Uh, I just uh, got lost on which is which. Uh, okay, here's the one with a, a small rock and a big one behind it. You, you can separate them later, I think. Okay, so this one is uh, on the. On the uh, there, there's a little space in, in, in between these two layers. So that's important to keep. Okay. Because they're uh, just the, you know, rocks, you can do anything actually. Okay. Um, this is another little rock on the foot of this layer. I think I my sketch is kind of smoothed. It's not very. I I I, I printed uh, with cropping. Uh, the actually the the green greener colored copy has cropping. So it's not complete. Look at uh, the, the uh, original, you'll see more <laughs> on the margin. It doesn't matter. It's, uh... OK, so <laughs> I separated the layers. And now I'm, I'm, I will add the uh, uh, texture. And there's one uh, horizontal line like uh, above the water and it's uh, lower than the, the slope maybe oh i already start uh, doing uh, rubbing that's not a good idea but uh, it's so what um you can do that together with the uh, shaping you can start doing the rubbing at the same step you know this is what we call the uh, hemp, hemp style of a hemp rope. The hemp rope is very, uh, let me see if I still have that rope. Okay. If you haven't seen this uh, before, this is the hemp. Uh, the name comes from this, uh, this uh, this rope, okay. So I, I just use the uh, the brush in, in a slant position and uh, uh, kind of drag. Uh, let me just do this horizontally. Be free, feel free, but uh, vary the length of it to create uh, create some kind of rhythm. See, probably he does it very fast. I think you don't have to be so careful here. I'm going to hurry up. So just use a dry brush, but uh, don't lose a sense of uh, the uh, brush tip. So using the brush tip, even you slant the brush, you, you, you paint it loosely, but uh, use the brush tip. You can twist the brush almost like a, uh, the um, the other artist in one month uh, tangled, uh, entangled, uh, just like you know this this part, this is swearing, this a curving uh, line. Somehow, you can just feel free to do that. And some horizontal lines, you just. 
pour the brush with the with a, like this position. This dark a little bit too early, I think. I I just have this habit to remind us. So don't don't start don't uh, break ink yet. Use dry ink after the first layer is dried to enhance it. So it's just um, okay. Here's another rock separated from this triangular shape, and then the horizontal line. This this uh, line has a rhythm. The length of it has a rhythm, rhythm of a um, distance and length. And leave the the water open. Don't draw any ripples because there are too much uh, wind <laughs> in the too much storm. We don't want to have any ripple to destroy the the mirror-like uh, mind of the lake. The lake has a heart. We call it Hu Xing, you know. <laughs> the lake heart sees the mountain clearly. Lake mind. The lake has a mind. Mirrors the mountain. It is an ancient poem. has a very clean um, stroke. Uh, just remember, we shade one side of the uh, the contour on top, not the uh, not both sides, right? So if you want to squeeze out the light under it, you just use dark not dark ink on top of it. And this area, the sink area is, would be dark. And we use um, dark, dark ink later. Okay, so now we have, I, I don't have a line here, but I will add it, uh, a darker bank. It's roughly here. Okay, so just shape it. You we'll probably use a smaller line, uh, brush, very small brush. He writes very um, tiny, you know, like quarter inch calligraphy, very beautiful calligraphy. Uh, in Yuan Dynasty, all the painters tend, uh, literary painters, tend to sign and write the poem of the, you know, to record the mood and occasion of their painting regularly with uh, seal, stone seal. Uh, it was not uh, common in Song Dynasty. They usually put in a hidden place, but uh, Yuan Dynasty painters tend to use calligraphy and the same brush may be used for their painting. Okay, I'm going to draw this uh, distant ground next. Uh, let me see if I need to make sure the tree, I don't think so. We can do all the light, uh, all the light. Okay, what's the time? It should be okay. If I don't do the color. <laughs> Okay, so I'll start from the, um, let's do this middle ground. There, I think the distant ground on this print is a little too, I don't know, let, let me see if it's uh, different. Yeah, I think it's, it's all exaggerated by the computer editing, I think. Let me show you the uh, actual color in the, uh, Original painting again, and this 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 distant ground 
uh, very dry, very soft, very dry here. Um, there, just a little bit um, indigo, maybe a, li a tiny little bit uh, mineral blue. So definitely not so strong as the, uh, yeah, I see it's just a little touch of a mineral, maybe just to blur things out like a gouache, you know. Uh, so it's so mysterious. Okay, let's, let's do that. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> I'll do this trees on top first, maybe. So tree always comes before rock in literary painting because they are the actors, uh, the stage is the rock. So make sure it's lighter, maybe. And there also front and back, maybe. And uh, a very the distance also. So there's a tall one on this side. Okay. I, I think we don't have to copy exactly the original, just get the idea, you know, the, the distance, the varied distance. And actually they're quite even, but with lid, don't try to um, do it too deliberate. Sometimes, you know, if you do it subconsciously, you are the nature, as John John Martin, the master said. I am the nature. <laughs> so if you do it, uh, everything planned, uh, logical and uh, rational, then you have to be really, really careful. Okay. So uh, the, the the light, the foliage, horizontal dots is very light, not covering. The uh, trunk. Let me do the uh, because the foliage is on top, so it doesn't matter if we do it to if we do the ground now. A dry brush, dry brush, dry the brush. I should have some some blocking paper here. Okay, I dried the brush with the paper towel. It's easier. Okay. I made a mistake on, on crossing this uh, tree. I think he did, uh, but his brush is so dry, so it doesn't really matter. Light, you know, you can, you can ignore the trees. Uh, the trees could be added later if you do the uh, slopes, the river bank first. So just parallel, parallel uh, lines it could be added later after you. But we don't really see much uh, contour here. Knee says, knee says, uh, knee says uh, if you want to ha have your painting look antique, uh, antiquarian, you know, antique, uh, like ancient, uh, don't put too much uh, wrinkle in the lines. Use this, uh, use the dry wash, dry wash. He used the word wash, but I interpret it as dry wash because he, he, he rarely used the wet into wet wash. Okay. So dry brush, make it look antiquarian. Does it look like, you know, old? Um, I lost somehow this 
there are two stones here. I, I don't see that in the small picture. So you kind of uh, start loose and gradually press and then uh, lift again. Sometimes uh, uh, you end at a stone, you know, like this. And vary the distance and the and uh, um, length to get rhythm. This is behind, so it's lighter, lighter. Dry, dry brushes, scratching. Okay. I just use the whole brush, get it done faster. So now the the distant uh, uh, mountains, I'll use even lighter ink. Even lighter ink. So it's almost like the wash would be uh, coming later. So I I draw this uh, distant uh, hill first. And uh, notice the three uh, the character Chu here. When this is this mountain is called Chu. You learn this word, right? The hill, hills, hill, and the hills. Um, Chu is different than mountain. Shan. Uh, these are ch typical Chu. You know this. This is a, the. If you look at the, the seal script, it's written like that. With two. Mount. Um, on top. Okay, my, my composition is a little different. All right. So he actually um, is not very far from Southern Stone. So his uh, uh, wrinkle strokes has some kind of fu pi or X cut. But uh, he, he used a small brush. He used only the tip. This tip comes, tip sounds centered, this stroke like the, but here he, he used a lot of rounded, uh, rounded, um, rounded tune or hemp. And uh, gradually disappear, soft. Okay, and then just a lot of parallel lines. Very very light. That's the point. And you, the the line just add some uh, bone, and you will be covered mostly by by the the wash later the dry wash, the color colored um, wash. Okay, here we have some inner contour. Inner contour uh, is. Belongs to this this uh, section here. So just parallel and uh, kind of entangled hemp style. He he and the Huang Gongwan school um, all derived from the you know early uh, uh, before Song Dynasty the master Dong Yuan. And Jiran, you know Dong Yuan, Jiran, he lived in, in the, they lived in the home, uh, Nanjing, my hometown. Uh, he painted this kind of hills with a hemp, hemp. Uh, it's pretty abstract, kind of. If you look at close, there's only you know barely uh, any shape, but in the distance, it's almost like an impressionistic painting, according to contemporary observations. Um, you have to look at in distance. Okay, here we do the uh, horizontal lines in the distance, so just the left and the right. This is like uh, the main tree in this distant group. Then the other trees will be smaller and uh, 
uh, simplified into horizontal lines. So this is the tallest, uh, the tallest uh, eucalyptus, eucalyptus kind of tree or shan su. I have to check the dictionary for shan shan su. It's only one, usually no, no branch, only one um, trunk. I think we see them here in the States commonly. Shan Tzu. Is that Sa Cyprus? Not Cyprus. Cyprus is not. You can add the, the trees behind in between, you know, something like that. Just uh, horizontal with some kind of rhythm. Neat freak. <laughs> I, if I, yeah, you know, he he does it so naturally. He organized them, not not to, not deliberate, but because he's a uh, personality, I think. He just do it so neat. There's no, no nothing like popping up, to, uh, poke into the eyes, like what our expression is, you know, with uh, some sticking out strokes, but all uh, harmonized, harmonized is the, the, the result of this kind of same, you know, as uh, Xia Gui, that's uh, the, you know, Xia Gui, our uh, favorite in Southern Song Dynasty. He does the jungles, uh, our, our uh, forest so well with this kind of. Okay, now I'm going to work on the houses. <clears throat> and I use slightly darker ink so I don't have to go back. Uh, there's some architecture, I'm not sure if it's a What's well, the kind of building that is only see partial roof, and I see some kind of uh, like a big car. It shouldn't be a car. It's just another roof in the front. Okay, here is the uh, hub. Cut kind of. You can make it. Uh, I I checked the, the uh, architecture of the the cabin uh, with the one in, in the in the this recluse uh, cabin uh, at Walden Walden Pond. It's uh, kind of difficult to. Not so pretty house. It's one big window only. And in the middle. So I just keep this in the original way. And there are some window kind of thing. This is a small window. And remember the side wall uh, and the relationship with the eave. Uh, is the key to painting the house. Okay, and I do another house here, just a suggestion. Okay. I think it's open, you can see the inner walls. Some fence kind of gate, uh, I think. Okay, now the tree, uh, the, the bamboo grove behind the, the house. We do the, uh, remember we, how we do the, the reeds, uh, same kind of procedure. You just do the uh, uh, stock first. And then you add some uh, some uh, lines. I think a bamboo, yeah, just horizontal lines crossing, 
crossing straight this thing, crossing the stock that's the impression of a distant bamboo. Usually I just draw in one direction. Abstract. This is like a writing, you know, you're just writing the character. Something like that. Okay, now um, we just do a little bit of shape, shape, sh uh, some wrinkles on the top of the roof. Actually, yeah, it's a straw roof. Okay, this one just made it white. And uh, I'll enhance the, the rock with, uh, um, you know, it actually the dark should come after the, uh, the color, if we do colors. Or we can just stop here. Uh, just with ink. Dry brush the darks. Now you know what I mean, you know, with the incomplete at the beginning with, now you can add, you have room to add um, to complete that. And you can redefine re it if you need it you know, and change it. So it's very um, flexible if you start from light, from medium, and then uh, add light and dark. Um, let's, let's just add a little bit of touch of light, uh, of color before I do a highlight. So I see some uh, bronze as a preparation. Let me, let me show you this uh, uh, high resolution one. I think it's closer to the original color before we do the coloring. Uh, got a question from Wing. The student, the structure on the right, uh, whole architecture. Okay, the bridge. There's on the right. There's no, no bridge. I think it's. Uh, hmm. I I I I think it's. It's. Uh, let me just interpret it as a big house. Let me see, show you. Okay, the, the, the roof, um, let me show you. Here, can you, well, you cannot really see. All right, so we're talking about this one on the right side. Uh, I see a side. I can see some kind of, huh, it could be underground building. <laughs> On top, uh, yeah, now I see some kind of hill behind. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't see that. Okay, let me add it. But there's no color or anything indicate to consolidate that. You know, we, I can make it into a, a chimney. Maybe it looks like a, like that here. There's no, no bridge or anything on that side. Uh, oh, you're right, uh, Wayne. It could be a bridge. I was totally wrong. Oh yeah, that's a river. Oh, but the river, how it runs to the front, maybe it goes behind the houses. Oh, that's a river bank. Now I see, okay. Ah, thank you, thank you. Um, Eric, you said there's a person. I, I don't see the person because Ning Ning never painted a, 
um, a person. If, you, if it does, this painting will break two um, stereotypes of New Yunnan's painting. No, no figure, no figure. <laughs> yeah, bridge could be, yeah, that's interesting. Oh, how interesting. I just realized that's a bridge. So let's, let's just make that into a bridge. Okay, let me, okay, stop sharing. So you can see I keep discovering when I copy. So I, I make this into a river bank. It goes behind, it, it goes behind the, the bamboo grove. Um, let's see, what is that? Oh yeah, it goes all the way up. And I see some, now I understand. It solved my puzzle. I didn't understand the, the right, the dots are, this is a distant bush above the, above the um, uh, bamboo grove. So this is a slope. And then from here, we, we are looking at some kind of, uh, so this dark is the shady part of uh, the hill, you know, the, the, the back, the, the far side of the hill. And then we see some bushes maybe on, on top of that. Then it goes, uh, yeah, that, that, that actually makes sense because the chi requires that. You know, you know the, um, so now I just watch this uh, bamboo grove with some light there. Yeah, that, that's a, a bridge. Uh, fortunately, I didn't make it into a window. It does like the, the pose on the bridge. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, now I understand. This is the slope that goes up from here behind, you know, goes up. And this is a uh, slope that goes down from here, goes down. So that's a, a opening and close, we call it. Um, that, yeah, close that. Direction. So I just do some dry brushing before I do the washing. This is called washing. He he's, he used dry brush. So I just use a little bit uh, yellow and and uh, yellow and ink to prepare. Oh, you can add some brown actually. I got some um, leftover here, the, the amber. Let me see if I got amber here. I think it's very, very, very subtle. So we just add a lot of water. Let's see the, the colorful copy could be a, uh, yeah. I think they use the computer editing heavily. So I can see the, uh, the brown here on this uh, side of this left side, the right side, yeah. And on the foot of the slope there. And uh, you see how little color we need and make a great difference though. Um, and then the, uh, Oops. Yeah. This is a brown. Here is a little brown. Yeah, this is a whole brown area, a yellow area. Some light. And this little rocks. Oh, that's too yellow. Almost like watercolor. So what? I, I did a uh, watercolor grid lesson yesterday with a waterfall. If you're interested, to check it out um, with uh, Rob Chiro. Uh, I requested that actually he, when he asked us what to do, I requested, what, uh, I asked him to do waterfall in Western style. And I did some um, Chinese version also. So you can check that out interesting uh, to compare the two culture. So certainly I'm very 
uh, much more sensitive to color now as you know before i, I i'm not um, very conscious with the color theory so now i i can use it i, I know cool and the warm that kind of concept helps but you can use complementary colors here. Before you apply green and blue, blue and green, you can use amber to uh, underpainting as a preparation. Cool. The final is green. Yeah, dark again against light is also important here. Uh, so this this layer is relatively dark here in the shade. So let's just do I use warm first and then I'll use the cool on top of that. Okay. And uh, just uh, doing all this. Oh, I fell in the, the river. That that should be open and a little white. There should be the river. I forgot. I still thinking about that uh, that the house. Uh, anyway. So you guys can read better than me now. What's in the in original, that's great, great. Okay, I'm going to use some uh, orange color to do the uh, yellow, yellow, a little bit for the roof. I'll leave it uh, white before the bridge. Yeah, that's the entrance. Uh, so the, I yeah, I need to emphasize on the gate. Maybe here's the gate. Uh, the fence on the side. Okay. Well, now I'm going to out uh, to do some uh, uh, highlights on the on the on the trees before I uh, add more color. I just take this time to wet it dry and I just highlight the trees. I don't have to repeat, remember, I can modify it to make it thinner or thicker or you don't have to touch it see if it's perfect. You don't have to do this, but just to waken up, we call it waken it up, to, to enhance, to awaken, awaken the painting. Very dry and uh, dark, darker color. So that that's a behind tree, but uh, yeah, it should be lighter than this to make it heavier even. You know, I, I don't want to touch the the wet. That that's a, a stain. Um, we don't want to. <laughs> It should not, should not happen in, with the new news painting. So you can tell this is a copy, not the original. Not neat to have that. Okay, now I use a little dark, um, probably he just used one stroke um, starting from the, the dark part. Um, so just overlap. Not repeating that, you know, you can 
you can overlap with the, the light. His fourth stroke groove is kind of narrow and elegant and kind of, so. Try to keep it neat, as neat as possible. Oh, I forgot. This is a different tree. Just this is behind. So these two trees, you very easy to confuse because they have some overlapping there. We want to distinguish. That's why probably you need to do one tree first, and then uh, add another behind. Maybe that's what he does. When you do it together, it's very easy to confuse which is which. Okay. He said he, he, uh, his painting is uh, very uh, trusty to express his uh, exhilaration uh, of his uh, uh, breath in his uh, breast. So that's uh, kind of stroke we need to keep in mind. But he is so um, con not controlled, reserved in his, uh, to showcase his, uh, his skill. It's very peaceful in the end, as the end. It's a very typical literati. over. What time? We have 10 minutes. Okay, I'll finish it. Okay, now the dark on this layer, this is uh, even behind this. This is the search tree. Just a little bit, just a little bit near the, the center and the, near the branch. This dots, okay. And I'll add little dark flower dots, like a five petals of a plum. Make sure I don't overlap to keep it decorative. You don't have to repeat what under underneath, just like little flowers, you know, little little plum flowers. Okay, and uh, let's see. A little bit dark, maybe a little dots. And plus some some kind of to enhance the pine. He doesn't use much mustard. Each stroke is a composition. You look at the whole thing, and you will know if it's if there's a stroke that jumps out. That's not good. Okay. Let's see.
minimal make apps four layers to get the tree rounded. And uh, I believe there's a color on the tree trunk. Okay, that's actually this interpretation, but whatever, we just follow that. This is a digital copy. And I wait a little bit. Try. Uh, okay, here's uh, two two yellow. I need to fix that. Okay, I'm going to use uh, mineral colors. Colors dry. Don't need much in this. So, this this is not going to be. It's already mounted. So I just use Western color for convenience. Okay. Um, Actually, okay. yeah, it comes off. Just need a little bit mineral green. Getting less. Okay. So this um, has to have a preparation like we just did uh, with the uh, brown or yellow or indigo, whatever transparent colors, and then we just cover it with, uh, it's, you can do it in multiple layers with op opaque, this is opaque mineral mineral colors, this green. You can mute it to with a uh, little brown. Actually they act on the paper, not, so let me just do it here. here. The paper turns yellow, I think. This is not the, um, the background color was supposed to, to use. But uh, you can. I just give a little accent of a brown here and there. Use your, your Western eye, it's okay. Just you know what 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 the darkness and what uh, hue you want and this is the um, back okay darker here dark against the light always and, uh, also the green tend to be on the top behind it, uh, below the trees. But make sure you don't overdo it. So it's, you can add it gradually, but not do it in one step. And if it's over, you cannot take it out. Mm. I, I start to overdoing it. Some wrong in it, just to go through this. Okay, the main tree could be a little more. Oops, let's, let's do a colorful theme. I, I did a lesson in lesson 20, I forgot 26 or some 27, I forgot. Uh, with a copy of uh, Li Yunning by the Qin master, Wang Yuanqi, who's a very famous uh, uh, late imperial Ch China painter who is uh, considered as a Chinese Cezanne. He used a color like this, green and the bronze, uh, did a uh, copy of Li Yunning. I, 
so I kind of uh, follow his uh, little bit coloring. So we just draw the um, the blue a little bit. You can use indigo. I just use uh, ultramarine or, or cerulean, um, whatever I got from the Western. Ultra, I think, with some green mix on my brush. So this this tree is the uh, dark darkest, but not to the dark the extent to cover any ink. It, the ink stroke should show, and you can see um, the color is applied with the same kind of stroke as the um, ink work. Okay. Um, so this is the greens. We try to distinguish the colors, and for this second one, this could be a little yellow. Not sure if it's good. A little brown, maybe you know, if you don't know, just you can put both all three colors red, green, brown, some yellow, some green, some brown. If you know what to do best. Okay, and uh, certainly I would add yellow to the uh, the bamboo growth, this is a tender green. Very light, very, very light. And for that bridge, I'll leave it to open, but uh, I highlight the, the line a little bit, just a little yellow there. And uh, the chunk for the this pine. Oh, remember that the knob should have white around it. Another mistake I already made. I cannot change that. Let me see if I can pick it up. So in the knob, you should keep it white around it. This is eucalyptus tree should be white. Or yeah, this is the point. Okay, the the uh, foliage for the pine. We can just use the ink and the. And you you don't have to fill in the all the white. You just kind of brush in the same kind of stroke as you did the ink work. Yeah. The upward dash yang tou di, I don't know if it's the English name for this, I'll check it. The upward curve horizontal line for the uh, needles. It's a stylized, okay. I think the original has the red, it's, which is nice, but uh, yeah, I think that that's why we need some red in there. And, um, that's that, yeah, the, the original has some orange color in, in the, that kind of uh, echoes the, the roof and it, yeah. I cannot add it. It will make the tree look like a bad tree. The, because the, actually, why not? Because uh, it could be. It could be. Some some uh, dead foliage on the tree, on a needle on the tree could be red. I won't do that. You know, it's complementary color. You know, and then, like I said, if you put yellow green, blue, and any basic color, you vary it, it's 
it will always, always look nice. Okay, so color for this one, it's a bluish color on the distance. But this time, yeah, just just blue, no, no red, no, red, no yellow. Very light. Very light, very light. Okay, don't overdo it. Okay. Um, the fans should be a little yellow or brown. Uh, window, just a little brown, I think, cold. So leave some light. Windows. Okay, so the distance should, should be more blue for sure. Okay, just blue. I mean, I, I just use the same stroke everywhere. I think Nizan will not use wet wash, but uh, uh, just to make it faster. Uh, you can you can do it one one stroke uh, at a time, like uh, you did to uh, the the uh, horizontal dots. Um, I just wash it to the wet brush, and I would wash this area a little bit, just feeling the Side. Okay, and I, I'll watch this ground. I don't know what was the original, but use some uh, some kind of brown color. I think I just leave it. I think of the color is a little bit uh, pale um, here. So we get too much, uh, let's see, white in it, maybe. So we can harmonize it with the uh, with, uh, um, overall wash of a gray, green, maybe. Not too dark, not too dark for sure. This could be darker. Here's this um, behind the trees. We want to pull out the white chunk and the, the layer before it. This is the darkest. I think, oops, it's bloody, stop bleeding. Okay, um, this could be stronger. I want to take a chance. It's all because I have this yellow here I have to cover up. Otherwise, I don't need this much color. OK, 
it. I already passed the time. Um, let me just uh, finish it by sign it. And I'll show you the results um, after it dries. I'll take a good picture of it. Uh, basically, you add dots after this dries. Um, the dots could be added uh, uh, along the uh, contour, but not um, side by side. You know, you need to vary the grouping, uh, casting thing uh, to make it rhythmic. Let me show you the final. Uh, okay, yeah, it's a horizontal kind of dots, horizontal dots, uniform. Uh, so this area is most uh, dotted. And there are some vertical ones indicating little um, sprouts of, of uh, grass or reeds, even here, see, along the, the river. So there are some horizontal dots along this, the, uh, I mean, vertical dots along the, the uh, this ripple, whatever you call it, this uh, shape, Th this uh, um, river, orange color shape, red word. Okay, yeah, you can interpret, uh, this is uh, Massachusetts. I don't, I'm not familiar with the vegetation there. So if you live in Maine, it should be more colorful. You can uh, interpret it. Oh, I forgot this uh, top mountain. Uh, it should be with uh, some mixture of uh, green and uh, brown. So the brown, it's uh, near the this layer. So let me do the brown. Yeah. This first, I need it to say some, just some different color. Anything, you know, diluted enough, it's nice. The colors, so far as the, the colors can say. So I'm just kind of sweep. And there's some mist. Um, actually, here you have to, you. When you do the mist in the foot, you can wet the area uh, where, where you want to keep the painting dry, uh, wet. And then just kind of paint it into it. You can also pour the, the color into the, the empty space. Either way, you can wet it first or use, uh, before it's dry, dry uh, pour it, spread it with a, a clean brush. Okay. I just combine different colors. Just use a little more than color. See if I can get it. I just use opaque lavender color from watercolor class. And I add some uh, Chinese uh, color left over here. So just try this. Uh, this is too blue. Okay, that's how much blue I need. You can make this blue, I think this no reason to be wrong. The Chinese uh, Asian companies won't use uh, any aerial perspective or atmospheric perspective, so they do. Uh, but they do, do know the distant mountain to be for like indigo. Um, this is very close, actually. This is not even a mile away. Maybe. Just uh, I don't think the the Walt, the Walton Walton Pond has hills like this, but uh, you can add it. In your assignment, so you can recreate it in your mind. Okay. Actually, when I see the painting, I I mean, see the real pond, I kind of disappointed from imagination. I see 
from his description, you know, I see colors, uh, with his um, sky, rain, you know, they, he, he, he has a very colorful uh, description about uh, the colors he see and scenery and different weather and the time of day. Very, very beautiful writing. Okay, so that's about it. Um, I would watch this. Uh, oh, I, I didn't stop sharing. Uh, you, you have missed all the washes I did. Huh? Anyway, that's good too, because you can see the original. <laughs> um, yeah, I did this area with uh, uh, variation on colors. I did some water in the uh, lower part of the peel, and then I just washed it. Uh, from dry to wet, into to wet. So I think we don't need any flying white here. So I just blend it. Like my bronze near the foot of each section should be something like that. Same principle as here. Um, you can ha keep harmonizing it, you know, many, many layers. You can just go slow if you have time, since you have time to do this. Uh, so just go slow and uh, enjoy the, the process. I wash a little bit bluer green, and just along the highlight this uh, horizontal lines, and do some final touches. some bronze on this little box. Illuminate to illuminate to unnecessary white. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this uh, lesson. And uh, next time we'll learn um, Japanese uh, master Seshu and um, uh, the influence uh, of the uh, Chinese uh, landscape painting in Japan. Um, so be sure you come to uh, review the Zen lesson, maybe before me to that. Oh, by the way, I haven't released the uh, the class for the next uh, series, and we will continue this uh, uh, chronological survey. So we will um, we will continue to Ming Dynasty and uh, uh, Qing Dynasty, and maybe uh, the Republic, um, even twentieth century. Late, late, I, I think we may not cover uh, to contemporary, but uh, we can continue even. We'll see how it, it, it goes. And uh, um, you will still uh, we'll go, go back to the beginning of still because the later, uh, we call it post history, because the history already, uh, creative part is already been done. So, so there's uh, antiquarianism, just copy list. But, uh, they're wonderful artists. Like I mentioned, the one and she who does colorful design, like this, uh, I'm doing here. And uh, so they have their interpretation of tradition. Um, if you're interested in you know, the contemporary artists like Zhang Na Qin and Fu Bao Shi, these are all um, masters who have learned. Uh, he draw heavily from uh, tradition. So the, the, it's very important to, to, uh, to learn from the, the source.
some line maybe um, last it was uh, cover you know covered by the the wash then you can uh, reinstate after after the, the color dries you can go back in the uh, redo them why you do the uh, the dots but um, design has a set you know the, the less line the, the more ancient look so that's a good uh, point to remember okay uh, I would write Fang Yi Zan Fang Mimic Yi Zan um, See where tonight. Yeah, we don't have much room on, on the top. You should have. It originally is a long, long format, but, but much longer. Well, I can write on this side, or just the. Uh, I don't see any signature there that I'm original. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, it, yeah, it's on, on the uh, upper part. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, yeah. He has a idea. It's the Mongolian uh, dynasty. Rain name on this side, on the right hand side, and the you can put the seal. Yeah, that's his seal. This is big squares, and you can put the. These are all carnosaur seals, stamps by the collector. Yuan Dynasty, Ming Dynasty, Qing Dynasty, Emperor's Five Seals, all that. This original inscription is here. Yi Zan, okay. Uh, let me just write. We don't uh, use his uh, real name. We just uh, use his uh, uh, pen name when he, to show respect. We just say Fang Yunming. That's his uh, uh, pen name. Cloud and uh, forest. Yi Yunming. Yunming is his, uh, his, his artist name. Fang Yunmin, Yun Clouds. If you have taken calligraphy class from Victoria, you know these two words, cloud and the forest. That's his name. Um, I'll put uh, the year of the uh, 20. Kind of wet. Yeah, I, I need to try it. So I, I'll write all the way down here and use the hair dryer.
sorry about the noise. I just finished the writing. Okay, uh, says uh, 2020, uh, Li Xiaohui, my full name. And uh, see you. Sure, the orientation is right. I'll put on the side. I? I don't want to put in the class. That's not good. I'll just put on the side here. Okay. And uh, I can put another seal. I'll leave it for the collectors. <laughs> you don't have to put a lot of seals, but uh, it will be nice. Mm -hmm. Just put the okay, I put my hometown uh, name seal. We call it uh, father's hometown name. Uh, it is where our can, our family is originally, which is uh, in the same area, not very far from uh, Yunin's place. It's in Zhejiang, the, called the ancient Yue state. Oops, a little bit blurry, but I think it's nice. The antique and style, and ancient style. This is uh, the ancient Yue. It's the name of the warring state uh, that the the, the um, one of the four states in in ancient uh, pre unification time. So um, finally, I will just add these uh, dots to show you. Okay, the dots on this this area that's dark, and here I don't even have to look at the original. I know we will do this, and just this this time, just concentrate on on your your own work. You can see the, the dots could uh, uh, be put along, but not um, exactly side by side, like a, a string of the uh, dots. You can, you still have to, just like you do the birds, you know, the flying geese um, with very distance. And remember we, we have this uh, little, Vertical dots, so so small actually. That it's along the horizontal lines. This is all you know. Just serve to break, to add rhythm, to to change things. You you can, you know, if you miss something, you can use dots to to connect or to cover it up. It's some something like that. No, no dots in the background. Let me just like this is too flat. I, I instead of adding lines, I just add dots. You know, or you can add a little dot line if you want, but just don't have to do it. Remember, and you can add a line, highlight that. This can still outline the trees if needed. But the best is don't you know have any sh any um, part to show you or jumping out, popping up. Uh, just keep it very harmonized. And uh, the distance have some dots. Also, you can 
that the, you know also always on this shady part and this shady part maybe not on top i think maybe yeah just the the joint the intersection part you can you can use them to separate two layers a little bit just like some trees if you look at the real hills you'll see them behind uh, they kind of define the shape of the the slope that's how it works the rhythm is very important let me check finally to see if any you, yeah now i standing up to see the, pic, the whole picture see this is the dots and this well there's not any dots overlap that's amazing <laughs> i just realized that that's interesting and you can see it it concentrate and disperse along this slope, but not exactly a line. It's, there's some uh, tributary, like a uh, vein of a, a, a theory of a dragging vein, you know, that kind of thing. Dragging vein is the idea of uh, the ridge. And there's the climbing on top of the dragging vein here. I, I, when I started real copy, not writing my own, I start got lost. So better don't overdo it for for the sake of the copy. You don't have um, this. So this does make a difference if you, you know, instead of redraw the the contour, you use dance, very dance uh, dots to cover to define the contour. So I will add these dots for sure. And then my brush gets dry, which is good. And that's very meaning-ish, meaning. That's his, his name. We usually call him. And the dots on his trees also define mustard, mustard brush. Again, this is the mustard brush. I think it um, it is very handy. I designed for this purpose, so I did almost all the line work with this this brush and dots. Of course, it's called uh, I called it to dots mustard brushes for this purpose. Okay, I think you. You might, you know, just add a line, a hint of it, but uh, don't overdo that. Use, just keep it subtle, I think. And you, this is a really nice to just put a little dust in the darkest dark here behind that indicate the different plans. And uh, here I need to bring another Slope, kind of. And all the dots almost the same angle. That's neat. Just different uh, variation in, um, in, in grouping and the, uh, yeah, in, in uh, like here it's too, too flat. I can you can you can scramble a little bit. Just use driver and the dot amount to create uh, the texture and uh, some vertical dots. Grass very miracle. Grass reeds. You know could be distance. And this is longer, of course, to be in the back. This little dots, uh, lots of dots here. I don't need to do that. Okay, you don't need to count one by one. You know, it's just the get the idea. Um, yeah, after it dries, it will look. Uh, um, 
because the color dries lighter, right? Uh, yeah, almost dry. You can see. So this is darker than that. And this should be in the middle. Let me add one little thing. I don't have any greens here. But uh, let me check. We only have one green in this area. I think that's it. Let's echo the front. Yeah, I lost my uh, river there, it should be white, but uh, it's a refraction, okay. <laughs> it's, uh... Well, if you have the bridge in white, the river should be dark, right? Dark against light, so that's right. Anyway, let me take a picture and send it to you after this. Okay. Oh, I, I didn't stop the screen sharing. Uh, I'm sorry, Suzanne. Uh, yeah, basically I, I, I just started to the, this, uh, this dots, let me, um, yeah, I'm sorry that that was, uh, what I did, the dots on this uh, distant mountains and uh, here, the dots along the, uh, the slope. Let me open comments to AI. That's a disadvantage. If I disable you to unmute yourself, you cannot uh, allow, now I allow you to talk. Okay, sorry about, <laughs> about that. Um, now you can ask questions, if you will. Hi, Henry. Yes. What is on the left side above the house? It's a grass, just a, a slope? Uh, these are distant... Uh, um, distant uh, bamboo. Okay, let me show you. If you go, I forgot to upload the, the bamboo. I didn't realize there's bamboo here. Um, so the bamboo in, in distance is not like uh, like this. This is might be middle ground. You know, the uh, if, if I paint foreground, uh, it's almost like realistic bamboo, but not getting more abstract. Okay, this is middle ground bamboo. Uh, he does this in, uh, okay, this is the distant. So normally we do this, we will draw this uh, uh, stock, bamboo stock first, and then we just, we just use this kind of horizontal lines. Maybe four of them in a group four or five, you don't have to count them, but. And you can vary a little bit between groups. We don't usually, usually overlap uh, in one layer. You can add a darker layer uh, later with dark, darker ink. So this is the, the bamboo growth. If you look at the bamboo in, in the uh, distance, you will see this kind of feel, um, this, this horizontal and vertical. It, it bends like that, you know. And it, it's narrower, the shorter on, on the top. The more, uh, I think, yeah, that if you look at one, it will be like that. And narrow also on the bottom, 
this is abstract. Try to make it, he, he make it very natural. So um, let me show you the, the original painting. Okay, he, his, yeah, just like this uh, tree, the horizontal line become, that's his style. He, he preferred this kind of dry brush instead of definitive brush. Can you see this? Do you, do you understand that? That's a horizontal um, leaf foliage. This this is bamboo. It's, this should be the one I you know, later become more abstract because he uh, at his time he's uh, uh, the early artist. He he doesn't have any formula yet. Maybe he, he just paint from uh, his uh, uh, impression maybe of the bamboo. Uh, actually, yeah, I see a little light, a little light line. You know, not so obvious like I draw here, but. Keep that in mind. If you even you don't see it, you know you just dot along the line, and you can overlap different uh, uh, growth, different stocks like that. So that that's the, uh, the bamboo. It's very look like very very much like a bamboo. Do you see? Can you see that? It's not grass, right? There are grass like this here, uh, not grass. I, I missed it, interpreted. It's the grass of the roof. <laughs> I saw it was grass on the ground. Yeah, there is grass here. The, the, the vertical ones, see, this, this grass. This is grass in the foreground. And uh, mustache could be anything. Um, so this, there are two trees, this branch crossing behind this main tree. That's a little confusing when I and now you can see very clearly the three trees mingled here. Uh, this orange tree is in front of the vertical leaf tree. And this is the four group of J. I think he did it in three. I, I didn't pay attention. I, oh, yeah, some with uh, four, some three. Uh, he mixed them. It, yeah, he's a master. He knows what he's doing. OK. Yeah, that's bamboo growth. Okay, so the the on the left above of the bamboo, there's another tree on the left of the pine tree. Oh, this is cypress. Cypress. Yeah. Okay. The the black pepper dust that stands for cypress. Typically, it could be holly. It could be holly. Uh, doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, I I I would. I'll call it to Cyprus. Okay, so there is a pine tree, is that correct? Or just a Cyprus, no pine tree? Um, it was a pine tree in the original. I changed it to Cyprus, just, just for fun. <laughs> if, you, if you look at the original, uh, let me identify it for you. Um, I think uh, this is a pine on the left, very f uh, far left, see this one. Um, okay, you see the pine very clearly, right? This uh -huh. one. Yeah, he did. He did the light first, and then the dark. Never do the dark first with meaning or later imperial painting. You might do it uh, on silk uh, with uh, you know like a Song Dynasty painting with dark first, but they don't do the dark first. And this vertical one, I I call it. Uh, yes, yeah, could be eucalyptus. And this is another. That kind of tree. Um, this is maple, supposedly the, the red foliage one in the middle. Uh, this one is the the main tree with the four groups, uh, group group of four stroke, like we learned last time. Okay, so in the in the in the middle middle ground, these are. Uh, when we can you check the, what's the shan shan su shan uh, let me let me search on google at, victoria maybe can you, okay yeah if you need to uh, go you can go if you have questions you can continue to ask
Okay, no questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, if we want to continue, do we just email you? Oh, uh, there's a link. Uh, just go to Blue Heron Arts. I, I will send you the link. Okay, send yeah. the link. Sorry, yeah, the, yeah, when you order the online class, it will be $200 and then you get free shipping on your supplies. So you, you better do that together. I'm sorry, would you say that again? I didn't get that. Yeah, we we count that as a total uh, order in the, in, with, for free shipping purpose. Uh, so if you, when you order the online class, you get free yep. shipping on your supplies at the same time with the same order. So you don't have to separate your orders. Okay. And then, so what if we want that brush that you're painting with? What do you call that? I call it a Blue Heron Arts, B-H-A, Moss Dots, M-O-S-S-D-O. M-O-S-S. D-O-T-S, B-H-A. Yeah, that's the full name of it. It's inscribed on the on the uh, handle. It, uh, in Chinese, we call it Dian Tag, Dotting Must Must okay. Dots. Okay. Well, I'll just tell them on the email that I want that brush, but I don't think I got the name right. Um, it's in the category. You you have to order it. Yeah, it's in the catalog. I have to order it. Yeah. I'll be able to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you want someone else to order it for you, for you, yeah, just tell them to order mask dots brush. Yeah, mask mask dots brush. B H A. Oh. Blue hair arts. Mask dots. That, that's the mask number. Dots. Okay, got it. Yeah. Gracias. Okay, yeah, that that's a um, landscape brush for for painting this uh, kind of work. So, I have another question for you. Sure. Um, many years ago, twenty years ago, I was in Nanjing, oh. and and I got this the stamp, but I don't know what it says on it. I don't know whether it's my name or what it is when they when I bought it. I don't remember what they said. So I'm just gonna send it to you sometime and maybe you can tell me what it is. Uh, can you show it again? I didn't see it. Now I can see you. Uh, can you hold it? What, what, what are you showing me? I'm sorry? Just hold it in, in front of your face. I can see it. What are you holding? Oh, the sleeve. Yeah, you have to send me a print. I'll send you a stamp and you can tell me. I don't know what it is, whether it's my name or whether it's the, the man who made it did something. I don't know. Um, yeah, most likely your name. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Okay, gracias. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? Oh, oh, by the way, I have a class with uh, two artist groups uh, in San Diego. I think some of you already uh, got a newsletter. Uh, I didn't um, uh, pub, uh, advertise it in public because they have a um, target of you know, 20 people. We got like 15 people so there. Few left, few seats left. It's on the uh, art of uh, um, boneless style flowers and uh, plants. Uh, after Li Ye Wu, he is uh, um, my favorite uh, flower and uh, flower and plants insect painting uh, master in Cantonese school, uh, Southern China. If you familiar with that, I have a class before uh, on him. And uh, for the first time, I went to teach a uh, Zoom class I, I'm in his style. That uh, uh, it's in between uh, spontaneous and the Gongdi are elaborated. Thank you. Henry, Charlene, 
um, uh, your video, your voice sound sometimes is muffled. It's not clear. Is there any way that can be corrected? Oh, I actually, I, I muted myself. Okay, can you hear me now? I, I was muted. I don't know. I accidentally muted myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it, you're hearing from uh, uh, maybe another room, <laughs> computer in another room. That's why. I'm sorry. So you didn't hear me talking about the new class, did you? Well, I did. Uh, actually, I plan on joining anyway, and I just keep watching on uh -huh. your, uh, as I say, your screen, the blue heron okay. uh, arts. Yeah, just check the new class in, yeah. the, in the workshop uh, section. And there, uh, there's a flower. Uh, if you're interested in the flower plants painting. Yes, that would flower. be good. Yeah. What, uh, where do you sign up for that? Okay, let me go to the website to show you. Um, Blueheron.com? Yeah, blueheron.com. Let me show you, share with you the class. Uh, so you, if you go to Blue Heron Arts, uh, you will see the home page. I just uh, come to from a link. So this is my uh, one of the product. So you, if you look at the, the categories is under workshops and the classes. Okay. Under the workshop and the classes, you will see uh, two current to the lessons here. And okay. uh, let me see. Oh, this one, Li Ye Wu style boneless painting. If you don't know him, you can look at uh, the, the paintings I did after him. And what's the name of this class? It's a uh, Li Ye Wu style boneless painting workshop. The what? Um, maybe it's, I, I'll make it easier. Just uh, cut uh, flowers and and uh, plant. Let me let me go after this this, this okay. book. We have an ebook you can purchase here um, from our website that will be used for uh, this class. It's called the uh, plant a flower and the flowers and the plant a, a flower and the plant. This is the book. A flower and the plant. A flower and a plant pain, painting album by, by him. So that that's okay. the, yeah that's the style. Okay. Okay. Can so, yeah. Uh, I already have the ebook, so I can just use it. I mean, it's a downloadable book, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You can just use the one you got. That's right. You don't have to buy the, the book for the, it's sold separately uh, than the, the, the workshop. So you don't have to buy the book, you already have it. Yeah, I do, I do yeah. have it. Yeah, that, that's a lesson on, um, so I'm, I'm not going to advertise for, uh, like I, I only have a few room left. So I think uh, if you guys sign up, it will be fine. Uh, I, because we have a section on critique, so if it's too many people, maybe we don't have time for doing that. Um, so we have a two hour demo and one hour critique. You will send the picture to me in email uh, after you finish it. If you could, you know, it would be fun. So um, I'm planning to do some, um, Maybe orchid to start with, and then uh, some. Uh, it will be flowers, maybe tree blossom or something like that. And he is good at uh, insect, like bees and uh, mantis. Yeah. Okay, I see you either in. Um, uh, Oh, yeah, the next week we will still, let me see what's the date is eight. What the next lesson is the uh, third. Yeah, mm -hmm. so 
I'll see you anyway. Um, then the following week on the uh, eighth, the, that's a Tuesday. If you take a calligraphy class, it will be right after the class, but a different ID. You have to log out, then join a, a different class. Will this class be on Thursday? The painting, uh, I mean, the flower and the uh, plants painting will be on Tuesday. September and, this, and this class will continue on Thursday? Yeah, this uh, landscape class will be continued on Thursday. Yeah, that's what I want to do this one again. Yeah, same okay. time. It's, yeah, we'll, it's continuing, okay. right? Or is it starting over? We will continue. Yeah, it, it's, uh, we may have some overlapping content, but uh, it will be different. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. good. So, yeah, we'll start maybe again from uh, painting basic rock and the tree, but then maybe. Uh, good. Yeah. That will help. That will be great. Okay. Um, see you next week. See you next week. Bye bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Thank you.